Good afternoon, folks. This is Ticker Guy Carl from sunny Niceville, Florida. Listen, I want to talk to you about level three assets, the dollar, gasoline. What? What does all that have to do with one another? Well, actually, a lot. Let's first talk about what level three assets are. Level three assets are assets that banks say they don't have a market price for, so they make one up. That's not quite true. See, Goldman's level three assets went up by 50% in the last quarter. They're not alone. They're booming everywhere within the banking system, both in investment and commercial banks. Why? Because banks are taking assets out of level two and putting them in level three. And why is that happening? Because they don't like the prices they're getting, to be blunt. Let's take an example. 97% of the houses in foreclosure that have ended up as real estate owned have gone out to auction in California and have come straight back. Why? Because the bank either bid on its own house or it did not get a bid that met its reserve. And you'd say, well, what's the big deal with that? Well, the very big deal. What's that house being carried on the bank's balance sheet is worth? The bid or the reserve or the full balance of the loan that they're carrying? Hmm. This is organized, pernicious fraud, folks. Let me give you an example. Let's say you owned a small air conditioning company and you fix air conditioners for people. And uh, in order to fix those air conditioners, you have to buy them. Well, in order to do that, you would need a bank line of credit normally. And you've got 10 guys, and these 10 guys drive trucks, and so you have 10 trucks. And they're worth about $20,000 a piece. So you go to the bank, and you say, you know what? I need a operating line of credit in order to run my business. And they say, well, what do you have for collateral? And you say, well, you know, I run the company out of my house, and not a whole lot. But I have 10 trucks, and they're worth 20 grand a piece. The bank says, well, how did you get the value? You pull out your NATA blue book, and you say, well, this is a blue book says that they're worth $20,000 a piece. The bank looks at it and says, okay. So they uh, they haircut that a little bit and they, they give you, let's say, an operating line of credit for $175,000. And they say, you know, now look, every quarter you got to come in here, you got to give us a uh, you know balance sheet and some financials and you need to show us the value of these assets. You say, you know, no, no, no problem because what happens here is, you know, the old truck, uh, you know, gets a little beat up and I go and I get rid of it and I get a new one and so the value tends to stay right around that $20,000 on average. The bank says, okay, fine. So, a year goes by and the housing market goes to shit. Kind of like it's happened now, huh? Two of your competitors go out of business. Gas gets very expensive and all of a sudden your trucks go down in value. You see, you can't buy any new ones because you don't have any money. On top of that, nobody wants big trucks because they're gas guzzlers. And so, you pull your NATA book that you get in the mail and you look at it and you go, oh crap, I look at this. And it says my truck's only worth $10,000 a piece. That sucks. It sucks really bad because I have $150,000 of my $175,000 credit line out, and when I go back to the bank with my financials, they're going to say, but your truck's only worth $100,000. Guess what? We're calling your loan. Bad, 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 bad. That would put you out of business now, wouldn't it? So what you do is you say, look, um, these trucks are really worth $20,000. What's your justification? Well, they were worth $20,000, and they'll be worth $20,000 again. I'm sure of it. As soon as the economy turns around, we'll sell them. But right now, we're just going to hang on to them, and they're, they're worth $20,000. Now, you don't think the bank's going to buy that. So you call up a guy that has a computer, and you say, you know what, give me a computer model that says they're worth $20,000. He does. So you print out this computer model, and you take it to the bank, and you say, you know, here's our new fancy-dancy computer model. And if the bank is not paying much attention, they might actually accept that. And so your loan goes on. So you miss payroll, and the bank calls your loan and finds out that the trucks really are only worth ten. They eat seventy-five grand. Ugh. Not so good, huh? Well, why is it working in the United States right now with investment banks? I'll tell you why. Because of something called fraud. Hey. What's fraud? Well, fraud is intentionally misrepresenting something. And when you have other people in support of it, it frequently rises to the level of this thing called racketeering. Now, look, I'm not a lawyer, so I can't accuse people of that. And I'm not a prosecutor, so I can't file charges. But I can tell you what it looks like to me as a guy that ran a business for more than 10 years. If I intentionally took a mark that I knew wasn't represented in the market, I would expect to be called on that and accused of committing fraud. And if I did it in organized in organization with other people, I would expect to be charged with racketeering. But in this case, the people that are doing it are the SEC, Henry Paulson, Chairman Ben Bernanke of the Federal Reserve, 
um, the FASB, the guys that set the accounting standards, and Basel, the guys that set the standards over in Europe and everywhere else for banks and, um, and you know all the guys of BIS and all these other folks. They all cooperate in this. And so we don't have anybody trying to prosecute these clowns for doing what I think is an outrageous fraudulent exercise in terms of their balance sheet. By the way, Goldman is carrying nearly their entire equity value in these level three assets. And the last two times that we had serious consumer-led recessions, assets very similar to those ended up worth zero. Well, that would wipe them out now, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. It would wipe out their stock price anyway. They'd have to go out there and, and you know, to maintain their capital position, they'd have to issue the same amount of shares they already did. That cut their stock in half, at least. Well, they don't want to do that. So they maintain this fiction, and everything looks okay. And, oh, it's even better. Lord Blank finds this bonus based upon the stock price and based upon the performance of the company. With a artificially small count of issued shares, because which, which of course, makes earnings per share look better, why do you care? You don't invest in the stock market, do you? Can you fill your tank up with gasoline? The guy over in Saudi Arabia has oil. You want some. You also want to buy some food, and food is oil. Oil powers the tractor and the train that gets the food to the market. It powers the tractor that drives the combine that harvests the food, and the tractor that sowed the seeds. Oil is everything. It's the plastic in your computer. It's the plastic in your car. It's everything. It's in everything you do. It's in everything you are. It's oil, energy. Unfortunately, the guy over in Saudi Arabia knows what's going on with these banks and with Henry Paulson and with the SEC and all these other guys, and he doesn't think it's very funny. So what he says is, you know what? Oil, we'll sell it to you in dollars, but the price is going to go up a little bit. And since we don't think that the rest of the world is cheating quite as bad as America is, um, we're going to preferentially do business with people at a slightly different exchange rate. And since the dollar is what oil is priced in, you know, if you've got euros, well, they're 159 now to the dollar, so that means that oil in euros is actually pretty reasonable, but oil in dollars is extremely expensive. The price of oil goes up, the price of everything linked to oil goes up, the price of all imports goes up, the dollar goes down. Why? Because the dollar is a call option. It is a CDO, in a sense, on the productivity and the ability to tax of the American government and on the productivity of the American people. And the rest of the world doesn't believe our accounting anymore. So what can you do? Well, if you want $3 a gallon gasoline by Memorial Day and $4 a gallon gasoline by the end of the year, you do nothing. You sit on your, your chair and you drink beer, which, by the way, is going up in price because you're sitting on your chair. If you think that sucks, then you get on the phone and you call Congress. And you tell them, no more level three assets of any kind. No more fictions. No more mark to myth. None of it. No more CDOs. No more CDSs that are not backed by margin. None of this accounting fiction. It all ends right here, right now. And you tell Ben Bernanke and the Federal Reserve, it's got to stop today. Your choice, folks. But time's running out. Gas has gone up tremendously over the last two years. Milk has gone up by 35% in the last six months. Eggs have doubled. Do I need to keep going? You pick.